Um, they will just type questions to him, and he did, so it will be just Alex, you and I on there. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Frelichman. Uh, broadcast has started. We're going to wait for a few minutes to uh, for everybody to join in. Hello, everybody. Alex Frelichman with Telerad. Uh, we're just going to wait a couple more minutes for the rest of the people to join in before starting the webinar. Hello, everybody. My name is Alex Frelichman um, with Telerad. Uh, we are still seeing people joining in. So if you don't mind waiting one more minute, we're going to start at 1.05 uh, Eastern Standard Time.
Okay, so I guess we could start. Uh, so my name is Alex Rothman. Uh I'm a VP of Sales for uh, Jalera, uh North America. Uh, would like to welcome everybody on uh, our series of webinars uh, about uh, CBRS. Um, as you know, Telerad coming in with uh, SaaS neutral platform. We work with all of the SaaS providers, known SaaS providers such as Fidget, Wireless, Google, Comscope. I uh, would like to make sure that, that uh, each one of the SaaS administrators have its own nuances, unique differentiating elements, and Comscope is well, well known player in the industry uh, with regards to to existing uh, solutions, licensing that they offer. So I want to make sure that everybody knows that Comscope does offer SaaS services, and uh, we have two amazing panelists, uh, Rashid and Andrew, uh, to, to talk a little bit more about their uh, products and services. Um, on that note, I would like to go through a few slides, uh, share a little bit more about Telrad, uh, some latest updates. Uh, feel free to raise questions into the chat. Uh, the plan is to leave maybe 15, 20 minutes towards the end of the, uh, towards the, end of the hour to talk to answer some of those questions and whatever uh, time we're going to bleed over, we're simply going to, to address those questions offline. Uh, on that note, a um, uh, little bit about Telrad. We're, uh, Telrad is a, is a 67 year old company. Uh, we've been in the industry for quite a long time, primarily specializing in, specializing in telecom, um, telephony. Uh, world. Uh, last few years, uh, we emphasized wireless as our primary core uh, competence in business. Uh, Telrad itself consists of six different sister companies, uh, something around 1,700 people, almost 2,000 people. Um, uh, uh, Telrad Fixed Wireless Broadband Group is one of those groups. So. Plenty of networks deployed, a lot of history, a lot of know-how, a lot of intellectual property, uh, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. So, in a nutshell, um, some of the uh, customers of ours, some of the bigger names and smaller names, uh, you find Telrad back from the WiMAX days. So there are almost four million TPEs deployed globally. So you do see uh, you do see our brand. Uh, you know, a good presence of our brand. Um, markets that we cover, uh, pretty much anything, uh, anything from residential to municipality to smart uh, applications, whatever it is. Uh, uh, we support mobility, we support mobility. It's not a mobility as in traditional sense as carriers offer. Uh, I kind of make an emphasis that it's a nomadic application. We're not trying to compete with uh, uh, our product is not really uh, doesn't fit into into Verizon's or TNT networks. It has a little bit different application. Uh, when we're talking about fixed wireless uh, networks and delivering bandwidth uh, for fixed wireless application, Telerad comes in with a very unique uh, approach to 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 the problem, and uh, we've. Uh, designed our own scheduler that our system is built around. So the quality of the bandwidth delivered is second to none. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about architecture. So LTE, as you know, consists of four main components. And traditionally, you obviously have a base station that goes in the tower, the enhanced node B. Uh, you have the subscriber unit, UE, that may be you know, available in, in you know, different forms and shapes and kinds. Uh, then you obviously have the evolved ticket floor. Uh, uh, we have two uh, two choices for EPC. One traditional external box that can handle up to about 10,000 QEs, uh, and another one is embedded. And this is the beautiful part of our CBRS solution. Each CBRS or five gigahertz unlicensed base station comes with built-in embedded EPC. This is our Concept that we call LCE in the box, 
where you could literally take by just one base station deploy it as a standalone LT node and it will uh, authenticate the user, it will terminate the traffic and function as in more traditional uh, you know, proprietary or Wi-Fi system. Uh, obviously, all that wrapped around with very nice software package called BreezeView. And BreezeView, this is our eyes and ears of the network. Uh, that's how we provision our equipment and make it work. This is how we gather statistics. Uh, this is our NMS, ACS, whatever you can think of. Uh, additional function that was recently added with CBRS advancements is obviously um, it also became domain proxy server. So that means that all of our existing customers don't really have to do much to migrate into the CDRS. Yes, software needs to be updated, migrated, but uh, most of the existing infrastructure stays intact. Just make sure that you, you refresh the latest CDRS ready software. As of today, our base station is already part 96 compliant and certified. CPE 8100 series, CPE 9000 series are certified as well. Um, we are going through the process of uh, certifying CP8000 and CP12000. So uh, most of the CP portfolio will be um, uh, will be certified. Now, uh, so typical deployment models for uh, Telrad is you know, low density applications is split mode. Uh, you know, you can move from split mode to dual sector by adding dual carrier. Uh, you know, we have mechanisms for uh, enhan uh, enhanced coverage under heavy and line of sight. Um, all that is available. Uh, under CBRS, uh, our split mode will, you will not be able to operate system under split mode. So all existing uh, low density applications, they're gonna have to be, uh, you're gonna, a customer's gonna have to add dual carrier license to, in May, to, to be compliant with CBRS. Each sector has to have its own physical cell ID. And then obviously we do have uh, ability to double capacity uh, from 100 megabits per second to go all the way to 200. And there are two venues. Uh, one is uh, carrier aggregation, the dual carrier, carrier aggregation, and another one is multi-user MIMO. And MU MIMO is very, it's, this is our flagship feature. Uh, it's a very elegant way to double capacity. Um, and uh, we've been having some really good successes recently uh, with, uh, with uh, the way that software is coming together. Uh, Compact 1000, this is our uh, go-to base station. Uh, that's the one that we shipped in thousands and uh, uh, it is CBRS compliant now. Um, all of the existing base stations uh, that we've shipped until today, uh, Compact 1000 base stations obviously become part of, uh, you know, uh, naturally uh, become part 96 compliant. Uh, we also have ISO Compact 3000, and uh, that's that's our EBS BRS frequency band, the license, and uh, we recently introduced our 5 gigahertz sun license. And, you know, if you're, if you uh, this webinar is not for that, but if you're interested, we can definitely take the conversation offline to talk about our unlicensed uh, LT system. Um, so, that's that's about it. So now, so portfolio of CPEs, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have CPE 8100, 9000. So basically, category four uh, uh, CPE. We have category six devices and category 12 devices. Each CPE has its own um, unique differentiating you know, elements, uh, but all of them work together. They can all feed off the same sector. And then for five gigahertz uh, solution, we have CPE 12,000 U, uh, and that's uh, it looks different. It's, uh, it's uh, obviously a little bit different product. Uh, later in the year, you we are planning to introduce a dual band CPE, CBRS, and five gigahertz. So that will allow customers to combine two frequency bands, uh, grab a carrier from from CBRS and carrier from unlicensed, and that uh, will just another path for you to deliver 100 by 20 service. So it's, uh, it's quite an innovative approach. Again, exactly the same hardware that we've been selling and shipping for quite a while. Uh, just, yeah, uh, additional ways to use it and uh, extend its life on the tower. Um, on that note, I would like to pass 
the phone and the presentation to Rashid Bhatti uh, with Comscope. Rashid, I'm gonna pass controls over to you. Okay, well, thank you, Alex. Um, while we're doing this passing of controls, um, I will introduce myself. Uh, there's, um, show my screen. Um, there's uh, two of us in the in the room here. Um, myself, uh, Rashid Body, and uh, Andrew Beck. Um, I'm the uh, director of uh, business development at uh, Comscope for the for our SAS CBRS uh, business. Um, and I will let Andrew introduce. Sure, Andrew Beck. I am the uh, director of our CBRS uh, operations group. I've been with Comscope for 25 plus years, uh, part of the, the long history of, of Comscope's uh, products in the uh, spectrum management and RF design space. Okay, so um, Andrew and I will kind of uh, tag team through this presentation. Um, I think we both have um, very different sounding voices, so you can tell who's speaking <laughs> at any given time. Uh, I'm trying to go into slideshow mode, but it keeps on flickering for some reason. Give it a second while we go through the technical issues here. Like a few slides should be open at the same time, maybe. There you go. It's working. Finally. Sorry about that. And are you Okay, here we go. All right. Um, so um, we're doing this uh, session with um, Telred. We have a very good relationship with uh, Alex and Telred team overall. Um, we've done uh, interoperability testing uh, with uh, Telred uh, CBSCs, and uh, we're working on several opportunities together. Um, so with this slide deck will kind of give you an introduction to um, Comscope involvement in the um, you know, CBRS um, ecosystem overall and uh, our uh, SAS ESC offering uh, in specific. And then, you know, if you have any questions, then we can uh, we can tackle those. <clears throat> so this slide here, it uh, kind of uh, showing um, Comscope's overall um, portfolio. Um, the, the focus of this discussion obviously is spectrum access system. Uh, one um, important crucial component of SAS offering is the ESC network, which is the network of um, uh, sensors um, that, that are being deployed along the three United States uh, coasts. Uh, to monitor for any incumbent activity, uh, mainly being the, um, the U.S. Uh, Navy uh, fleet carriers. Um, 
uh, other than that, Comscope, you know, is a, it's a large company. We have small cell and in-building uh, offerings uh, as well. Uh, what this diagram is depicting here is the different um, uh, outbound or external interfaces that a SAS uh, supports. Uh, so the, there's the, in, um, the interface to the ESC core, which controls all the, all the sensors. Um, that, that, in, that interface is um, you know, kind of behind the scenes for any operator or for any uh, equipment provider. Uh, the only interface that the SAS has uh, to, uh, or the SAS ESC network has to the equipment uh, or the radios uh, are the interfaces shown at the, at the bottom of the slide there, uh, whether it's a small cell or a, a fixed wireless um, uh, access point or a CPE, <clears throat> if it's a, if the CP qualifies as a uh, CBSC. Um, we, our SAS also supports interface to a domain proxy, uh, which can serve as, a, as an um, uh, aggregator for many different CBSCs. Uh, and then we have interfaces to the FCC databases and uh, peer SAS, uh, which is a requirement of the, um, of the CBRS uh, network system. I'll just add that the, the SAS is deployed on the cloud. It sits on Amazon Web Services as our hosting platform, uh, which gives us all the advantages of cloud scalability, redundancy, fault tolerance, geographic separation, things like that. Uh, and the connections to the SAS for, from the CBSC devices, or so from the Telrad equipment, is over a secure internet connection. We have redundant connections in the cloud uh, that talk to the SAS, and it's just over that IP network uh, through the internet that the, uh, the small cells or the Telrad devices uh, interface to the SAS using a WinForm protocol to request spectrum. Uh, the CBSCs or the, the small cells initially register with the SAS, give the SAS pertinent data about their location, about their uh, operational parameters, and then when they would like Spectrum, they'll make a request into the, to the SAS. The SAS will perform all of the required FCC Part 96 analysis for protection of incumbents, uh, for operation in, in the CBRS Spectrum, and then give that, that uh, Spectrum grant back to the, to the CBSD or the Telrad device for operation. And then there's a heartbeat mechanism that uh, goes on behind the scenes then as well, where the CBSD is regularly communicating to the SAS to see if there's any updates. For example, if any offshore naval activity is detected by the ESC sensor network and the SAS needs to move uh, a particular channel from a CBSD from one channel to another, then that would be accomplished over that, that heartbeat mechanism. Just to give you kind of an idea of the whole picture of how things are communicating and where things are hosted. So this, this next slide um, kind of captures where um, Comscope is. So before we even get into this, um, the both the SAS and ESC have um, very stringent requirements from the FCC and um, several other um, governmental agencies, DOD, NTIA, ITS. Um, both of these systems have to go through this rigorous testing and certification process before they can be used for commercial services. Uh, so our ESC um, offering has already passed um, the certification and it's, um, it's basically being you know available for commercial service at this point. Uh, ESC in itself is can't, can't be used for anything unless there's a SAS in front of it. Uh, so the SAS certification process is nearly complete, but um, there are some final well, there's one final step remaining. Um, there were uh, several uh, you know tests. Uh, activities that took place in um, in, in, in the different um, you know, labs with the uh, ITF labs and NTIA, etc. All of that testing was, was completed, uh, but as a final requirement, the FCC 
wanted to see an initial uh, commercial launch or initial commercial deployment, more widely known as ICD uh, period, where they wanted um, the SaaS providers that had completed all the lab testing to gather some real world data and um, then provide those results uh, to the FCC and they wanted to review those results before they would get the green light for uh, full commercial deployment. So if you look at this, this chart here, um, the first five boxes are all those steps that I just described and Comscope has successfully completed uh, all of these steps. We submitted our um, results, a report to the FCC uh, on November 4th. Um, the expectation was that the FCC will complete their review and uh, issue a public notice uh, for uh, or basically all the leading SASs uh, that would pass their testing, uh, that would pass their criteria uh, to basically move ahead with commercial launch. Uh, the expect expectation was this would happen before New Year, uh, but there's been a um, little bit of delay. Uh, we're hearing that um, the public notice should be going out at any day at this point. Um, so, we, you know, we're in early January. Um, we're definitely hoping in the next couple of weeks the public notice should be out. And that will, uh, when, when, when that declaration is made, um, that will basically um, mark the start of full commercialization of um, CBRS and, and certification, a full certification of uh, our SAS um, at the same time. As Rashid mentioned, there's the SAS is the last piece in the certification puzzle, if you will. The uh, CBSDs have been certified by the FCC. The Telrad equipment, as Alex mentioned, has been certified. The ESC from Comscope has been, been certified. We're just waiting on that, the SAS piece as uh, the last, last step. However, the FCC has allowed and has a mechanism to allow for commercial deployment now uh, through their initial commercial deployment program, which can be expanded. Uh, we can add additional sites for commercial operation just by giving the FCC seven days notice. Uh, so if anyone's interested in commercial deployments today, uh, you don't have to wait for that full certification. You can still operate under the ICD umbrella, although we expect to get that full certification any day. Yeah, and um, we have some, some customers that are even coming in at this stage and, and saying they want to uh, at least deploy a test network or, uh, you know, do an initial deployment under an ICD, uh, and that is still possible. Um, it, uh, all it requires at this point for us is to um, submit, uh, basically notify the FCC um, that we're going to extend our ICD to include uh, this new deployment, uh, and uh, we, we basically have to wait seven days after submitting that uh, notification and then um, we can support those uh, additional um, CBSPs or additional networks. Uh, so that's basically uh, being um, very close to what a commercial deployment would look like today, uh, except there's a seven-day um, waiting period. Okay, this uh, next slide kind of uh, summarizes you know, what our um, service entails um, and, you know, as part of the SAS and then additional services that, professional services that um, Comscope is um, offering. Uh, so as Andrew mentioned, uh, our spectrum access system, SAS and ESC service, they're both um, uh, hosted services. Um, SAS and the ESC core, they both uh, reside in the, in the cloud. So um, the customers, the end customers or operators, um, they don't, there's no equipment that we, that they have to purchase. Uh, it's basically just like purchasing a subscription. Um, we, we provide you a URL and some certifi certificates, and then you provision your CBSD to uh, connect uh, with, the, with the SAS. We have a little bit more information on that going forward. Uh, but all of the, um, management and maintenance 
of the SAS and ESC equipment is on us. Um, there is, uh, we, we're, we're fully responsible for that. Um, we will be doing alarm monitoring and you know, taking any actions that might be needed when, when there are new features or bugs are discovered. We will do in-service software upgrades. Um, we will uh, scale as the ecosystem grows and more customers come on, come on board. Uh, and then we'll obviously be doing KPI tracking and looking at the performance uh, of the system, um, of, of both uh, SAS and ESC um, cores. Um, there are some additional, outside of the SAS service, there are some additional um, deployment planning services that uh, the console uh, offering. We have some uh, more slides on, on that as well. Uh, so with, with these professional services, um, we, we're finding that a lot of operators, uh, very large carriers down to, uh, you know, um, very small um, risks and operators, they find uh, this type of analysis very helpful uh, where we can before they start deploying, um, we can give them some insight into the type of spectrum that will be available, what are the ideal um, locations for them, and if somebody's looking to um, bid and uh, participate in the PAL auction, uh, we have some recommendations on that as well. Uh, in addition to that, Comscope is also a um, certified uh, training program administrator for CBRS. Uh, so what that may, mainly means is for anybody looking to become a CPI or a certified professional installer for CBRS, um, they could come to Comscope to obtain that certification. Uh, and we have a little bit more information on that as well. Rashid, uh, one second, just wanted to interrupt. Um, you know, uh, and kind of ask the group if there are any questions, uh, anything additional that you would like Rashid and Andrew to clarify. Uh, uh, since there is quite a bit of information that's coming through right now, so don't be shy. Just put mess to put your questions straight into the chat. Uh, I look at them and then uh, we could just kind of break through and, and answer them either during or after the presentation during the Q&A. Great. Sounds Sorry good. about Thanks. that. Go ahead, Rashid. Yep. No Thanks. Uh -huh. As Rashid mentioned, one of the services that we offer is Comscope is uh, in the spectrum planning aspect. So Comscope has been doing spectrum planning, frequency planning, uh, frequency modeling analysis for well over 40 years you know, back in the uh, early days of cellular and the, the PCS band expansion as such, we, we did a lot of the uh, planning and mo modeling for, for auction bidding as well as deployments. And we're building on a lot of that expertise and in, in, uh, leveraging it in CBRS. And one of the things that um, uh, people always want to know with CBRS is before we deploy, what kind of spectrum might we have available to us? Since this is a spared, shared spectrum market, and am I going to put a lot of uh, capital and, uh, and money into uh, deploying a network and I'm not going to get much spectrum because I'm sharing it with 10 other guys. Uh, so we, we do an analysis. We have a service that, that uh, provides some analysis. They're looking at a lot of the complex rules associated with CBRS. It, it, it's complex because things vary in three dimensions. Uh, they, they vary across the spectrum. There's different rules for different portions of the spectrum. They're incumbents that use different pieces of the spectrum. Of course, they, they vary spatially. Uh, as the incumbents are located in, in different places geographically. Uh, as Rashid mentioned, the offshore naval activity is limited to areas around the coast where that, that, that uh, incumbent really doesn't apply when you move further inland. And, con and conversely, there's other incumbents like fixed satellite services that are more inland. Uh, and then there's, there's things that vary in time. Uh, some of the incumbents don't use the spectrum all the time. Uh, so how do we factor all of that together and, and model that to, to come up with uh, how much spectrum might be available at a given location. That's what our, our, our service uh, does. And it's also it's a forward-looking model uh, where we'll model things based on kind of the greenfield mode that we're in today, uh, but then we'll also look 
five years down the road and say, well, how much spectrum might you expect to have then when the markets are more mature? Uh, a lot of the rules in the CBRS are uh, in, involving aggregate interference protection. So in into a particular incumbent, it's not just one CBSD level of interference, it's the to total of the, the C all the CBSDs in the neighborhood, how they interfere with an incumbent. So you could deploy near an incumbent today and be granted spectrum uh, and be operating fine, but then as that area becomes built out, the sum of the interference from you and your competitors or neighbors uh, may exceed this interference uh, threshold. And you want to know that today. You want to know that before you invest in the build out that uh, as others deploy, I may lose some or all of this, this spectrum. So that's what we try to do in this engineering service and provide you with uh, availability studies of um, how much spectrum you might be able to obtain today in a GAA or a PAL mode as well as what you might expect five years down the road. And then as you're planning and you're deciding that you want to deploy uh, in a particular area, our, our model will also provide you a channel recommendation saying you might want to start down in this band because uh, it's more favorable to uh, uh, interference, uh, less and less interference into incumbents or, or maybe this particular spectrum maybe may have a more temporal aspect where you're, you might be impacted by uh, by offshore naval activity. Uh, we provide those recommendations and then also provide recommendations about this might be an area that would be uh, good to bid on a PAL license as it's expected to become congested in in, uh, in, in five years and you may want to get that, that license that would give you uh, the higher level uh, of, of, uh, of use in the tier, three tiered CBRS uh, protection model. So that's, that's one of the services that, that uh, Comscope offers. It, it, again, it's leveraging a lot of our experience in uh, frequency planning, frequency management uh, that we've had as a, as a corporation. Yep. So yeah, it's a, it's a combination of the, um, uh, the organizational experience. Um, Comsearch has been in this business for over 40 years. Um, a lot of uh, um, brain power in this, in this group. Uh, on the spectrum management spectrum in general, uh, but that combined with our um, tools and uh, algorithms that were developed for this, uh, it's created um, a very nice tool. Uh, and and uh, eventually we'll, we plan to make that a uh, automated as well so that we could give customers the access to uh, kind of run that type of analysis on their own. Um, so the, the graphic that you see on this screen is uh, one of the many, um, as an example of one of the many different um, aspects of the report that, that you would get from the analysis. So this is, I, was, I believe, was done for a um, county in, uh, for an area in Tennessee. Uh, so red, yellow, and green, that kind of indicates, uh, you know, the uh, suitability of the um, spectrum for a given county. And then we can drill down further into, you know, to a south side level. Um, this screen has some information on our CPI program, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, so it's all um, automated, you know, um, web-based uh, program. Um, Usually, um, I believe it's taking folks anywhere from uh, two to four hours uh, to complete uh, the course and, and to take the exam. Uh, the exam is uh, proctored, uh, so you would need to use a um, laptop, for example, with a, with a camera uh, where a proctor on the other end will be able to see you and what's in your surroundings when you take your exam. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so this is something that you can take online um, as of right now. Um, a link is provided at the, at the bottom of the screen, but you can, if you just go on uh, Google and search uh, Comscope CPI program or CPI training, um, that will pop up very, you know, at the top of the screen. Um, and our cost is also listed as 595 uh, per student. That's including the exam. Uh, if somebody's interested in just taking the course for 
um, you know, informational purposes and not are not really interested in becoming a uh, CPI, um, there's a there's a cheaper option that's uh, available on the website as well. And, and just for some background, uh, CPI is a, a new term for CBRS, the Certified Professional Installer Program. Uh, is something that was developed and required by the FCC for uh, for, for CBRS. And it, it basically is, is just uh, designed to make sure that the installer understands the Part 96 rules and understands the special uh, circumstances that might be new for, for CBRS. Uh, so any base station or any CBSD that uh, is a Category B, which is the, the higher power, the 50 watt models, uh, would require a CPI for installation, or any Category A, the lower power, one watt models, would require a CPI for installation uh, if that unit is not capable of self-locating itself uh, for within the, the FCC required parameters, or is being installed above uh, six meters of uh, height above average terrain. So in most instances, a CPI would be required, and it's usually your, your typical installers that are already installing uh, equipment that just get this additional certification through a little bit more training uh, just to uh, educate them on the CBRS aspects of their installation. So for uh, for, for a, a new user coming on to the, the SAS uh, to, uh, to register a, a CBSD or to, to set up a CBSD uh, for, for SAS operation, uh, if you have a Telrad unit and you want to connect it to the, the Comscope SAS, in the Breeze View tool that Alex had, had mentioned, uh, the operator can just simply select the Comscope SAS from that, from that menu. And that, uh, the Breeze View already knows how to connect to the, the SAS and and uh, would be able to establish that, that connection so that the CBSD could register, uh, register with the SAS. Uh, upon registration, uh, the, the, C, the CBSD is, is approved basically for, for operation when it provides the required installation parameters. Those are typically connected or collected sorry, by the CPI, the latitude, longitude, the, the azimuth, uh, antenna uh, coverage area, things like that. Uh, that's all done through registration. And then there's a WinForm established protocol for how the CBSD inquires uh, how much spectrum or what spectrum might be available in a given area, uh, requests access to that spectrum, and then uh, continues operation with that, with that spectrum in accordance with the, the protocol and the FCC rules. So it's, it's fairly easy to, to, to set up. It's, uh, as uh, we've mentioned, we've, we've integrated with, uh, with Telrad and through their Breeze View application connecting to the, the Comscope SAS uh, is, is, is pretty, just much uh, a few clicks. So, so, this, so this kind of slide talks about the, the commercial aspect uh, of, of things. Um, so um, Comscope is, you know, we have uh, multiple different types of um, options that are available for, um, for, for operators, for OEM, uh, to, um, to, to have that you know, re uh, commercial relationship with Comscope. Uh, we are open to uh, all different types of arrangements. We're very, very flexible in that space. Um, you know, Comscope, out of all the um, uh, available SaaS options today, uh, is the, the most experienced in the telecom space, we're the most, you know, well, we're um, well established and we've been doing, we've been in this kind of businesses for a long, long time. So we have all the back office support and infrastructure available to hit the ground running uh, on this. Uh, so for, for um, Telrad customers, uh, we envision that the customers will have a direct commercial relationship with, with Comscope. Um, and so that would start off with um, executing an MSA with uh, Comscope, um, which will basically inc include all the you know, pr pricing terms, um, SLA, um, you know, the description of what you will be getting as part of the service, all that good stuff. 
uh, and once the M an MSA or uh, master services agreement is signed, then the customer will issue a purchase order uh, to Comscope. Um, Comscope will provision that operator in the uh, SaaS and issue uh, all the you know, master a master user account. The master user is basically responsible for all the other accounts within that operator network, um, and will provide the um, the, 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 the SAS URL, which in this case might already be a provision in the CBSP by the uh, Telrad uh, Breeze View. Um, and so, so all of those technical um, uh, interfaces will be established. Um, and, um, you know, once the, um, the CBSPs are brought up um, and the service is, um, in, in, in fact, being, being used, in effect, and being used, um, the, the billing will also be done by Comscope directly to the operator as part of the, uh, the, the, the relationship established earlier. Uh, so um, there will be, uh, you know, that one, that, that straight, you know, one-to-one -one, um, uh, interface between the operator and Comscope on the on this uh, aspect on the on the billing and uh, support services. Okay. And um, this final slide kind of uh, talks about kind of summarizes uh, everything that we said uh, earlier, but also highlights some of uh, Comscope's uh, differentiators. Uh, so, like I just said, uh, while we were on the previous slide. Um, we are uh, we're not a startup. Uh, we are the Comscope has been in business uh, you know, for over 40 years. Um, we don't anticipate any funding issues anytime soon. Comscope is uh, you know has over 11 billion in uh, annual revenue. Uh, employs about 35,000 uh, employees uh, in over 150 countries. Um, and um, so that's that's one aspect of it. You know who are you know, most operators are. You know most people that might be on this call might have done business with Comscope at one point or another, or might be doing business with Comscope today. Um, we're also a uh, traditional telecom uh, business um, where uh, you know we are. Um, uh, you know what you you will know what you're getting. And you, you'll have that trust with us. Um, we, we we don't do um, data mining or use customers' data for other purposes other than just providing them the service that we've agreed to provide. Uh, so you will have that that comfort level with us. Um, Comscope is a, an innovation leader. Um, we have over 15,000 uh, patents uh, in our name. Uh, we're annually spending 800 million. In annual uh, R and D, uh, and that's you know just another indicator that as the uh, CBRS ecosystem develops um, and you know new technologies come into um, uh, become available, uh, new tools become available, uh, Comscope will have those at its disposable at its disposal, and we'll be making uh, full full use of those. Um, Comscope is also uh, a leading participant. In all the uh, standards bodies that are involved in um, the CBRS ecosystem, CBRS Alliance, Wind Forum, um, several different government organizations, um, Comscope has leadership positions um, in these organizations. Um, we mentioned earlier our expertise in spectrum management. Um, so, uh, Comsearch, the division that kind of is leading. Uh, the SAS and ESC development within Comscope uh, has been a, in this business for over 40 years. Um, we are the, um, uh, given you know, our um, expertise, our track record, um, all the you know, leading carriers in the, in the United States, um, they are, uh, you know, they, they trust Comscope and um, we are in various stages of discussion uh, for them to uh, select Comscope. Uh, we can't always uh, publicly share which 
carriers have uh, selected Comscope as their SaaS provider. Uh, of, however, one in particular has been announced, so AT&T is um, only using Comscope SaaS as their, um, as, as their, as their SaaS. Uh, and uh, you know, we are either being selected or in discussions with, with uh, all the other um, leading carriers. And I, and I think the, po the point of mentioning that is um, you know that when you are providing service to AT&T uh, or a carrier like AT&T, you're under a very strict SLA, and um, you have very there are very there's a very high standard of performance that you have to meet. Um, so regardless of who any other operator, you know the size of the, any other operator, they'll be getting the service from the same staff that's serving AT&T. So that should give you some uh, level of comfort on the reliability of our service. Um, we talked about our certification. We're fully certified. We have a, our EST is fully certified, and we're in the final stages of completing our uh, SAS certification. Um, our uh, you know track record um, in reliability and service speaks for itself. Uh, it's the this same group within Comscope um, that uh, was responsible for C nine one one location. Uh, for AT&T and T-Mobile for a number of years before we uh, sold that division to another company. Uh, but you know, that is a mission-critical service that requires very, very strict SLAs and very high reliability and basically doesn't you know, allow for any downtime, down, downtime at all. Um, and we've done that for over a decade. Um, so I think that's kind of um, a testament to our um, performance. Um, I, I kind of touched on our uh, support infrastructure. Um, again, Comscope's been serving thousands of customers uh, in, in terms of technical support as, as well as back office and front office uh, kind of systems. So we have all of that very well established and our group for the SAS ESC service is um, leveraging those, those same capabilities. Um, and you can probably speak better to our propagation modeling expertise. Yeah, so, so yeah, RF modeling, uh, in, including developing our, our own propagation models, is uh, is uh, also the, the, the point that uh, Comscope has had a lot of experience in. Uh, it's important because the SAS is using a lot of propagation models to determine potential interference and, and determine how much power or what particular frequency a CBSD can operate at uh, without causing interference. Uh, the, the models are uh, fairly fixed today and specified by the FCC and some of the government agencies, uh, but uh, in, the, in the future, uh, and there's something called coexistence, which is uh, coming this, later this year, and in coexistence, uh, it, it allows for more efficient sharing of uh, spectrum at the GAA is the lowest tier, the generally authorized access tier of, of CBRS, and there's a the flexibility there to adjust the propagation models and use your own propagation models. And one of the value adds that, that Comscope is looking to bring is some of our propagation model expertise, such that we can maximize the uh, available spectrum and the spectrum reuse and minimize the interference through the most accurate propagation model. We also have, as, as we described, uh, some of those pre-planning tools. That's something that we offer as a differentiator uh, to help you get an idea of how much spectrum might be available in a given geographic area under, under given conditions before you deploy. So you, you get that, that uh, at least some level of comfort that before you invest in CDRS that uh, you will be able to operate in the, the manner and use cases that you're, uh, you're looking for. And then we also are and have been uh, industry leaders in uh, in a lot of the standards bodies. Uh, the CBRS Alliance at WinForum, we, we both have board positions uh, there. Uh, I've been integral to those groups in the, the past five years or so, or six years as, as CBRS has been uh, under development and, and, uh, and maturing, uh, as, as well as various other committees and standards groups. Comscope plays a, a large role in that uh, as a contributor, as a leader, uh, and as a, an influencer into what's what's coming today and tomorrow. Sounds good. All and, right. Uh, 
Uh, guys, don't, 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 don't kind of wanted to, to, to take a quick break. Uh, don't, didn't want to interrupt, but uh, we're coming towards the top of the hour. And there are some questions that I wanted to bring up. So um, a question from Roxanne. Um, how are we enter all the data, SAMs, into SAS uh, if it's not commercially available? So, uh, so, uh, so right now we are running ICDs, initial commercial deployments. Uh, so with live SaaS, uh, 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 with live CBRS, live SaaS. So uh, BreezeView uh, provides you two venues to enter CBSDs, uh, either via two-step, where you go to, let's say, the Comscope, enter devices manually, go into BreezeView, enter devices manually, and then they link each other. Or you can enter devices into the BreezeView, and BreezeView will push those devices to Comscope, to SaaS. Uh, we call it one-step uh, process, so that simplifies, makes things a little bit easier and quicker. So um, same thing applies with migration from existing into the new networks. Um, you can export the data, add CBSD information for geolocation, height, azimuth, and so on, and then re-import it back into the breeze view, into the new breeze view. So that will save you a lot of you know, man hour, essentially. A uh, question from Norm, does uh, operation CBRS mode require 7.2? Yes. <laughs> uh, another one, what license uh, requirement and cost upgrade to C CBRS? So uh, Norm, so from Telrad perspective, uh, the only thing we ask is to make sure that you have an active service level agreement. That will give you access to latest software, support to, to provide the handholding and, and, and assistance. Now, uh, from that point on, we do not have any additional costs involved. So everything else is what Rashid mentioned uh, a little bit earlier. It's cost involved in uh, obtaining, uh, be becoming a CPI, so, uh, Certified Professional Installer. It's the SaaS access fees uh, that, that, uh, that uh, you know, Comscope is, is, is uh, uh, is, is offering and charging. So that's about it. But for a tel from Telerad side, it's really just simply ask you to make sure that you maintain an active service level agreement. Um, oh, Rashid, this is this question is for you. Uh, what discounts are available for CPI training? <laughs> um, so we had some. We were offering some discount. Um, through you know um, the last few months, but that um, expires, I believe, on December 31st. Um, but we can we can look at that uh, on a case by case basis. Uh, you know, if anybody is interested in CPI training, um, they could contact uh, contact me, and uh, I will see what we can do to to help in that area. There's yeah, certainly quantity discounts are, are easy. Uh, you'd like to you know, purchase a package or something, you know, multiple. Multiple uh, training courses offer discount on that. Thank you. Uh, question from Matt: uh, When is the effective date for CBRS? Um, uh, Rashid, do you want to? Um, I remember you had one of the slides talking about the, the the timeline and so on. So, can you collaborate a little bit more where we are today and and when the actual full commercialization is going to take place. Right. So that's and a question that probably only uh, Ajit Pai can answer <laughs> with 100% with certainty. Um, it, it, from what we've been told, and we're kind of uh, thinking the FCC on a daily basis, this was supposed to happen um, last week or the week before, you know, by before the end of the year. Um, so, you know, FCC, uh, you know, governmental agencies, you know, have their sort of processes and uh, internal um, uh, uh, organizational things to go through. Uh, but from what we're hearing, it will be very, very shortly. It could be any day. Uh, I know there's a CBRS Alliance quarterly meeting next week, and you know, we might get some more insight there as well, because usually uh, FCC officials are, are there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised that the announcement 
public notice comes in uh, while we are there uh, for the quarterly for, for the quarterly meeting. Uh, but you know, to make the long story short, we're expecting it uh, no later than um, uh, you know uh, mid January, uh, might even be sooner. Perfect. One more question uh, from Chad. Uh, what are the fees, uh, comes of charges for the SAS access? Um, sorry, the question is what is comes of charge for the SAS service? Correct. Yeah, so that's um, uh, something that um, we, you know, uh, share under an NDA. Um, so again, you know, this would be something that if um, you know, folks could contact uh, me directly. Um, I'd be happy to kind uh, of chat with them. Uh, you know, there might be some some companies that we already have an NDA with. There might be some that we we'll need to do a quick NDA, uh, and then we'll be able to uh, share that information. Um, I I can tell you that for uh, fixed wireless, uh, we offer a couple of different flavors. Um, one and and we know that one other SaaS provider has advertised some some pricing. Um, one of our two flavors is kind of aligned with that advertised pricing, and our pricing is lower than theirs. That's that's all I can share at this point. But we can we can give you a lot more specifics um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, um, I think this is it. There are not too many questions today. Um, I uh, would like to thank everybody for joining, and uh, thanks, uh, obviously, Comscope uh, Group, uh, Rashid and Andrew. Thank you for you know carving out time to talk to to our customers and audience, and uh, and uh, introduce Comscope you know, <coughs> CBRS services. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. That note... Sorry, Alex. I was just going yeah, to go add. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you for hosting this event and for inviting us and for uh, letting us speak to your customers. We really appreciate the opportunity. And uh, again, you know, we would we would like to welcome folks to uh, contact us with uh, with any questions, any further questions that you might have. Uh, I know uh, a lot of people want to know about uh, you know, pricing and some some more specifics. So you know we would um, uh, we would be very happy to provide that information. We just want to make sure we do that on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, and not you know in a public uh, uh, setting. Awesome. Uh, uh, we will have webinar available uh, a pre-recorded uh, webinar available uh, online probably sometime tomorrow. Um, and uh, there's going to be an email blast sent out with notifications with a link. So um, again, all of us are available to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, and uh, uh, again, thank you very much for your time and happy, healthy, and prosperous new year, 2020. Hey, thank you. Likewise. Take care.